your God. Amen. I mean, he is great and greatly to be praised. Well, we had another death in the family this past week, but this was a very young man, a 38-year-old, that went on to heaven, hopefully to heaven. I don't know where his heart was, but I know he's been suffering in his body for many years, and they think that this was a brain aneurysm. So tonight I have to go to the funeral home for a viewing, and tomorrow at 10 is the funeral. So just hold up the Gilbreth family before the Lord that God will bring comfort into the hearts of his children and his, his siblings. <clears throat> I have been ministering on relationships of wives to husbands and husbands to wives and just to kind of bring a little bit more in the relationship of a wife to a husband I was thinking about Sarah how you know she called Abraham Lord but there came a time in Abraham's life when God told Abraham do what Sarah said to do and there are just times in this world that God gives women the, the word that that which needs the direction that needs to be taken. And so in following the husband, we follow him as he follows the Lord. But when God speaks something different in our spirits, we have to follow God first. We put God first. And then another thing in uh, our today's society, so many people are led by the wrong spirit. And if there's a lot of anger and hatred and vitriolic poison coming out of their mouths, we cannot follow that man. Or if it's coming out of the woman's mouth, we cannot follow that woman. So in the process of learning our relationship with our husband as unto the Lord, Let's keep it in mind that we are not going to follow them if they're not following the Lord. Amen. So today we're going to talk about uh, the relationship of Christians to one another. You know, this is very important. God's Word says, how do we know that we have passed from death unto life is that we love the brethren and we have fellowship with them. When there is no fellowship, between you and your brethren then you need to check up and find out what's going on in your spirit that has broken that fellowship i mean we see this happening in families today but i mean it's not only been today there's been a situation in wes's life as a young man he said that his uncle did not talk to his daddy for years and then the uncle found out he was dying and he came to make things right with wes's daddy Time, life is too short. We do not need to carry bitterness and unforgiveness in our hearts for one another, whether it's to our brother or our sister or whoever it may be towards. We need to be forgiving. And as we forgive, then God forgives us. Amen? So we, we know that we've passed from death unto life because we love the brethren and we have fellowship. And you know what? We long for that fellowship. We desire that time of sitting together and eating together and just talking about the Lord. And we discuss the things that's going on in our lives. And, you know, from, this, this, from these conversations, we are built up. We are strengthened through fellowship with one another. So the relationship of Christian brethren. Finally, be you all of one mind one mind you know it says that husband and wife are going to be one they're not one mind we see that happening all the time don't we no that's male and female and they they just have different concepts in their lives but god is telling us to be ye all of one mind having compassion one of another love is brethren be pitiful be courteous having compassion one of another i know that there's an extenuating circumstance going on in chad's life today and it looks like there's going to be a death in their family and you know we must have compassion on chad and on cheryl and on his uncle 
God, you bring the answer. Father, you bring forth that what is needed in their lives to bring comfort and to bring the answers that they need. He needs a healing in his body. Cheryl needs a healing in her body. And Father, at this moment, we speak that word of healing to flow through Cheryl's body. Strengthen her, undergird, and strengthen her so that she can arise and walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. And Father, we send that word to her in Jesus' name. Amen. Not rendering evil for evil. When somebody has mistreated you, the automatic response of the carnal man is, I don't need to put up with that. I don't need that trash in my life. I'm getting rid of that person out of my life. Not rendering evil for evil. But as you return good upon their head, then God can do the work in that person's life. If you exemplify the love of Jesus through your actions, then God can do the work in that person but if you act like they do that's not the answer then both goes down both goes down it says the blind leading the blind so we must not render evil for evil or railing for railing what is that railing that is just complaining and and snarling and and com you know just making ugly remarks that's railing for railing that is not what God has called us to do we are to be peacemakers. Amen? But contrary-wise, blessing, knowing you are here unto called, that you should inherit a blessing. We heard a wonderful message about blessings, blessing our children, the, the prophetic blessings that you speak upon your children when they're small. Well, in the, in the church today, this is what we need to be doing. We need to be blessing one another and not making comments that are not pleasing to God the Father. Amen? But, and if we do this, then God says, we're going to inherit a blessing. I mean, God's made the way. He's made it possible. And you know, if you've got, un if you've got unforgiveness in your spirit towards someone, I want you to know that God can help you come through that. And the way you do this is with the words of your mouth. Father, you know I don't want to forgive them. But Father, I will to do your will. That's laying aside your will. And to do the will of the Father. So work in me the willingness to be forgiving towards that person. And when this is done, then there's going to be that forgiveness to take place in your lives. Amen. For he that would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. You, do you understand that by the words of your mouth you are justified? By the words of your mouth you are condemned? I mean, we speak it daily. What do we speak into our lives? Do we just speak the blessings of God? Do we speak love to one another? Do we give of that which God has given unto us? Or do we let the carnal man rule? When the carnal man rules, then it's going to be anger and viciousness and ugliness coming out of the mouth. But if you speak blessings on others, then your life will reap blessings. So refrain his tongue from evil. We look at our world today. It is so full of evil. I mean, evil has just run prevalent. And using America from where it was when I was a child to where it is today. When I was a child, we went to church. We had uh, carol singing at ch uh, in school. We had the display of the uh, manger scene. And we could do the plays in the school about Jesus. And instead... That's been cut out of our school, cut out of the lives of our young children since 1962 when the Supreme Court, which they will be responsible before God the Father. They're going to pay the price for the decision they made. There was one Supreme Court justice that, that went against the rest of them. So, of course, they carried it through and took prayer out of school. 
Time to return prayer to our schools and to America. And we as Christians stand up this day and claim that you have been in authority. You evil. You have ruled over America. But we are condemning you by the words of our mouth. You're defeated. You are a defeated foe. And God is in control. Regardless, he's in control whether it's evil or whether it's good that's coming forth. God is in control. And God will bring it all together to bring about the return of the Lord Jesus Christ to earth. Amen? So, where are we? We're caught up. We're wrapped up in the holy presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're walking in his peace. We're walking in the blessings of God daily daily amen he is supplying our needs let him eschew evil in other words turn away from evil and do good let him pe seek peace and ensue it ensure seek peace not division but seek peace if you are called a christian and you've made things right with god you cannot harbor unforgiveness in your heart you must ensure peace wraps around your spirit. And peace is what comes out of your mouth towards your loved ones, towards your brethren, towards your siblings. You are speaking peace toward them. And if it's a man and a wife, let me tell you what. That your prayers be not hindered. You go to God and keep things right in your heart. You know, when I do marriage ceremonies, I talk about love and I talk about commitment. Because let me tell you, love is an emotion. And when you first meet somebody, I mean, that love is flowing, right? But it doesn't take long you get into that marriage and you're a, ma a male and you're a female and you're two different people and you don't have one mind and one accord and there's problems. But you have children and you have made a commitment a commitment before God, before the pastor, before the people that were there watching your wedding. You have made a commitment, and it's time for you to measure up to that commitment. In other words, lay aside those feelings that want to tear this marriage apart and love one another. Make that, make that commitment before God once again. How do you do that? Return back to doing those first things you did when you fell in love with one another. Talk good things. Say good things about one another. Don't find fault with everything they do. If, if fault and finding fault is coming out of your mouth, then that's what your life is going to become. But if you can say, I love this man or I love this woman because they're a good person, because they have my daughter and my son, whatever the situation is, go back to that first love and reroute those deep, roots of love that you had for them then because satan is out here to destroy destroy relationships if he destroys relationships between a man and a wife he's going to have a big opening to destroy the children so it's so important for us to keep the commitment that we made before god for the eyes of the lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Isn't it wonderful to know God is watching? The eyes of Jesus are watching his people. It says it right there. The, Lord, the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. And his ears are open unto their prayers. You know, there's a couple of places in the Bible. Back when he was talking about his children, Israel, he said... Uh, having eyes to see they don't see and having ears to hear they don't hear and it's repeated in the New Testament Having eyes to see they don't see having ears to hear their ears are closed They're not they're closed to the truth of the gospel That's why we have to be his salt and his light upon this earth. Amen Because the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous his ears are open unto their prayers so when we go before God, know that he is listening. When we go before God the Father through the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, know that our Heavenly Father is hearing our petitions. You know, I have told uh, parents 
over and over that God has promised you your household. If you're living your life for God, then you can stand on the word of God. Go get my children. Holy Spirit, go get my children. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, bring forth my children. Bring them back to the cross and raise them up to be your salt and your light upon this earth in this hour. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. You know, God says he's angry with the wicked every day. Every day. He's angry with the wicked. And you know what? We don't have to worry about uh, getting vengeance on them. God's going to do it. There's going to come a day when the tares that are in the church houses are going to be gathered up by the angels and gathered into bundles and burned. When the Lord returns, it's going to happen. We don't have to worry about them. But God wants us to be sincere, honest, have the integrity of the Lord Jesus Christ in our lives. When we speak a word, it's going to be a word of truth and honesty. Right, brother? I mean, we are His vessels. We, our lives do not belong to ourselves, but our lives belong to Him who's given us eternal life. Amen? But who is he that will harm you if you be followers of that which is good? What a word. Who's going to have the ability to harm you, brother? When you're following the Lord, when you're doing what God wants you to do, how can they bring evil against you and accomplish anything? Maybe for the moment it seems like it has. I can remember a time a few years ago when evil came into our lives and, and destroyed a business. But you know, God is still in control. Good shall come of that. And you know, the thing about it is, is instead of speaking condemnation over those people, you speak, Father, you get them. Holy Spirit, you bring them into right standing with you. You love that person. You bring them into right standing with you. Amen? So who is he that's going to harm you if you be followers of that which is good? In God good. So there are 12 commands for Christians. He first tells us to be of one mind. How can we be of one mind? Get the Word of God down in you. If you've got the Word of God in you, then we're going to think alike. We're going to hear the Spirit, right? So be of one mind through the, through the renewing of the mind of our spirit. I, I mean, the spirit of our mind. Do you know your mind has a spirit? And God says that your mind be renewed by the Spirit being renewed in your mind then having that one mind have compassion on one another love one another I mean how can you say that you've been born of the Lord Jesus Christ and that he's Lord of your life if you're not loving your brethren if you're not loving your siblings if you're not loving those of your own household how can you say that you've been born again I mean this comes between you and God and you have to answer to that pre uh, to that need in your own life and make things right be pitiful that means tender-hearted be courteous be friendly there's nothing wrong with being tender-hearted and and friendly not rendering evil for evil well, I'll tell you, when we go through those things, we'd like to do that. Yep, and I quoted that scripture, God, you're angry with the evil every day, and I'd slam that door, right? <laughs> you're angry with the evil every day, and I'm angry too, you know. But be angry and sin not. Keep your words coming out of your mouth, ordered of the Lord. Not rendering evil for evil, not railing for railing. That railing for railing, complain. Complain bitterly. And how many people today, they're complaining. They complain and they complain. Change the words from your mouth. Open up your spirit and let God pour in his goodness and his mercy. Put the word of God down in your spirit. And then what comes out of your mouth will be blessings, will be love, will be compassion. Amen. Be a blessing to others. These are things that God has commanded that we do. Control the tongue, James 3 and 2. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. If you have the ability 
to control the words that come out of your mouth, then that means that you can keep your body under subjection to the Holy Spirit. You're able to control your whole body. That you're not going to walk out and do things that are ungodly. You're not going to speak things that are ungodly. If you are able to bridle your tongue. Well, how do we bridle our tongue? Through the power of the Holy Ghost that lives and dwells within us. And we are able to do that. Do not be deceptive. Shun evil for evil. Seek peace and pursue it. Shun evil and seek peace. The three blessings of the righteous, God's eyes are over them, God hears their prayers, and God, whew, hallelujah, God defeats their enemies. So those that are evil, that are trying to push their rules and regulations on us in America, you are defeated in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will not rule over America. Your day is numbered. Amen. Because God defeats our enemies, brother. Amen. Psalms 34, 15 through 22. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. We are the righteous because we've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. If you're doing evil, your memory of you is going to be cut off. I mean, this is the Word of God. So what are we worried about? You know, God is in control. Amen? The righteous cry and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. God, you're well able. For the Lord is nigh to them that are of a broken heart and save such as be of a contrite spirit. A broken heart, a contrite spirit. God can use. God can use that person. And he's nigh unto us. The word says that if we draw nigh unto him, he's going to draw nigh unto us. If we have a broken and a contrite spirit, God's going to draw nigh to us. But if we're going to be complaining and being ugly and saying, I'm going to get, I'm going to get that person. I'm going to get, I'm going to get that person. No, that's not what God wants us to do. He takes care of it he takes care of that situation many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord delivers him out of them all not some of them not a part of them not what he did yesterday but whatever you're facing today God delivers you out of them all so if you have a situation that is in your life that you have no control over you speak to that mountain Say, be gone in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a mountain in your life, but let the word of the Lord come out of your mouth and speak to that mountain and say, you are gone. And God does the work. And this I have tested and tried, and it's been proven in my own life. He keeps all his bones. Not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. You know, here in America today, we have a lot of people that hate the Christians. But God's Word says that they're going to be desolate. The Lord redeems the soul of His servants, and none of them that trust in Him shall be desolate. The Lord redeems the soul of His servants, and none of them that trust in Him shall be desolate. So we put our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and we lean not upon our own understanding. Our faith and our confidence is, Lord, I belong to you and you're bringing me through. Amen.